In this video, we're going to take a short detour and rather than move on to further processing images, we're going to show people how to export an image to an actual file so that those wanting to jump right into producing work can do so. When you export an image, what you're basically doing is applying whatever adjustments you made in the develop module to the image and then Adobe exports that as an image file. Remember your raw files are not image files. They are a raw representation of the data dump from the sensor in your camera. Once you export the image, you actually convert that to an image file and you can do that in multiple formats depending on what you want to do. And the way you're going to do that is you go to the library module and again, we can click the E key to, to bring that image up and, set, and review it one more time. And yes, it looks good so far. And then at the lower left corner of Lightroom, right above the film strip, you'll see the import button and then there's the export button. So to export this image to an image file with the adjustments that you've made inside of Lightroom, you simply hit the export button. And this brings up a dialog box that has uh, several options in it. Now the default is to put uh, things in a subfolder on your desktop and for the purposes of this I'm going to simply put the image uh, on the desktop. We're not going to put it in any kind of a subfolder and then that and you can put it in a file on a data drive or really wherever you want it to go but for the purposes of demonstration I'm just going to put it on the desktop and when you name the file you you need to you can leave it uh, the original file name but this drop down box determines how you're going to name your file and what I'm going to do I tend to give these a custom name much for the reason that I name my folders and it's because it gives me an idea of where this file came from and what it is. So if you look down here in right above the film strip you'll see the name of this file is DSC2555. It's a NEF file which is a Nikon electronic file format. So it's a, it's a Nikon RAW file. So I'm gonna call this DSC 2555 so I, I can always refer back to exactly which file this came from underscore foxkit and so that's going to be the name of the file and it's going to, going to go to the desktop I've custom named it but if you're going to do like multiple images all at once for a time lapse or something like that you want to leave it to the file name and then start it with a sequence number and so they'll all come out in order but we're going to just call this one the file, actual file name since it's a single image and give it a short description now here you can choose what format you want to export the file into just for the simplicity's sake of it, I'm going to export as a 100% quality JPEG with an RGB color space. And color spaces, um, you use certain ones for processing, but the standard color interface for the web is sRGB. So the majority, and for also most printing services use sRGB. So for the purposes of this export, we're going to use the sRGB color space, but you can use Adobe RGB. Photo RGB or other that you designate, but we're going to leave this at sRGB. And for the file format, you can ex you know export this as a PSD, which is a Adobe Photoshop specific file format, a TIFF, which is sort of a universal uncompressed. Well, it can be compressed, but it's sort of a standard file format that's been supported forever and will probably be supported forever. And DNG is Adobe's digital negative, which is almost converts it back to a semi-raw format. But it's an actually it's it's an image but nearly raw file 
or you can leave it as the original. And we're just going to leave it as a JPEG 100%. And one of the things that I usually do is I don't leave them full resolution if I'm going to export them for the web. And say we wanted to post this one on Facebook or even Instagram. I resize it and I choose the long edge to be 2048 pixels. And don't worry about screen resolution because essentially if you're exporting it for the web, that virtually doesn't matter. Uh, if you're going to print, it does. But even then, most printers don't even look at that. They determine that through their software. So that's, it's, I mean, it can be an important number, but one you'll rarely use. But I usually resize to fit the long edge to 2048. And the reason that I do that is that is the resolution of an iPad and an iPhone screen. And so you will get that full retina display effect. And that tends to be a pretty good uh, size for most things. I usually don't sharpen it uh, because I'll have done that in the software. And I include uh, just the copyright only a lot of times if you want to suppress the rest of the metadata, metadata. Or you can leave all the metadata like the camera use, the f-stop, and things like that. If I'm going to put it on Flickr, I'll usually leave all the metadata in there. And then you can watermark it. And I don't use a fancy watermark. I'm going to turn that off for the purposes of this one. But you can create your own. And really, that's your settings for export. So when I export that image, um, we will get a JPEG on the desktop. Now, my desktop will be hidden to you at the moment, but that is already exported. So we're going to bring up our Finder window real quick and navigate to the desktop. And there's our image. We can right click on it to open it. And of course, that's not going to fit. There we go. And then there's our exported image uh, in, the, in preview. So that's how you export an image. So people wanting to go through a quick workflow and get their first image exported, these um, videos that are on the channel so far will get you from importing your images, doing basic processing on them, and exporting an image. In the next video, we'll return to image processing and we'll go over the local adjustment tools. And we'll see you in the next video.